Well, everyone, the rumors are true. As usual, I had to go make some more funds in my bank account, and of course, I returned my M1 MacBook Pro. Now, I personally, my expectations were set at this this device was going to be the best thing you'd ever use in your life. Based on what every single person was saying, it just seemed like everyone was saying it was going to be the fastest Mac and the best one ever. And I will definitely say it probably is. When I was using it and throughout my whole entire time of, you know, messing with it and stuff, I was actually a fan of it. I really did like it. I, I think for the price tag at $12.99, it's actually a pretty good price to MacBook, especially considering the amount of performance that you're getting from that thing. And it seems like it's going to pretty much be future-proof forever, but I just don't think... But the thing to keep in mind, though, is that for everyone's use case, it's different. I saw a lot of people and a lot of their benchmarks and everything, and, you know, a lot of people were just, you know, editing out and sharing and 4K videos at super high codecs, and they were, you know, using Final Cut Pro and all these different things. And for a lot of people out there, I, I really don't think they need that much power, me included. Even though I upload 4 billion videos a day, I, I really don't feel the need or have the desire of keeping something that's like a super powerful machine if I don't need it. I feel like my 2015 iMac and my 2015 MacBook Pro still do the job. So that in and of itself is one area where I specifically don't need that much power. But I also think for a lot of people out there, they don't necessarily need the power of an M1 chip. If you're having to go and purchase a brand new MacBook anyway, then obviously the M1 MacBooks are the way to go. But if you don't really need a new MacBook and you're just wanting to get one because you think it's going to be the fastest thing or whatever, I will definitely tell you, you're not going to, you know, regret picking up this MacBook by any means. But you, I just don't think a lot of people need this power. I've been comparing this thing to even iPads. And I think iPads for, you know, majority of things you're going to do are going to be perfectly fine as well. I'm one of those people who probably can never switch fully to an iPad, but I still keep one around because there's still some things you can do with that that a MacBook or iMac can't necessarily do. Now, that's probably the main reason why I went ahead and returned it because I don't really need it. It's just sitting here and it was just kind of a waste of space. But I will also tell you another reason if I had to go and let's say I was, you know, I hated my iMac, I hated my MacBook, and I really needed to go and pick up a new MacBook, I would even purposely wait. Even if I picked it up now, I would still return it because of two different things. One, there's only one model of the MacBook Pro, the M1 version. There's, you know, different storage models and all this other stuff. But there's only one hardware model externally, which is the two USB Type-C option. There's no quad USB Type-C option yet. And that is something that's kind of like a deal breaker for me. I am not ready even to switch over to just the Thunderbolt ports and all that stuff with the USB-C ports. I'm not really a huge fan of that yet. I will eventually do and have to get dongles. I already have all the dongles. I just haven't switched over to it yet. I still like having the SD card and everything like that. But if I'm going to go and switch over, I will need to have, you know, the quad USB Type-C option. I don't want to do this two USB thing that are tapped out on for these new MacBooks. I'm not a huge fan of that, even with the MacBook Air. And so that's the first reason. But the second reason is next year, there's going to be a whole plethora of new M1 devices that are going to be coming out. Obviously, right now we have the M1 Mac Mini, the M1 MacBook Air, and the M1 MacBook Pro. But we're going to be getting, apparently from rumors and everything one's saying, that first quarter of 2021, we're going to be getting a 16-inch the M1 MacBook Pro, and that's going to be wild. That's what I'm kind of betting my money on, and that's what I'm probably going to end up getting. And to be honest, I'm probably going to end up turning in both my iMac and my, you know, 2015 MacBook Pro and just getting the 16-inch M1 MacBook and just doing everything off that. That's what I'm planning on doing in that specific case, and I think it's going to be a pretty good, you know, time. Now, I am also the type of person who always says, you know, oh, wait until next year, it's going to be better. Wait until next year, it's going to be better. But if you just keep waiting, you're never going to upgrade. So I understand there's a, it's like a double-edged sword. But at the same time, if you just know that something is going to be life-changing, like with these Intel-based MacBooks, they were like kind of, you know, mediocre upgrades year after year after year, especially with those butterfly keyboard MacBooks. I don't know what Apple was thinking. They like plagued a whole set of used MacBooks that I wanted to go and pick up. But regardless, what I will tell you is the M1 MacBooks, you can't go wrong. But it's just for me specifically, I would like to get something with more USB Type-C ports. And I understand I can always get like a USB Type-C hub and plug everything through there. But I'm much more inclined to pick up something that is going to last me much longer. And I feel like especially being more portable, the M1 MacBook Pros are awesome. And I would recommend getting the M1 chips rather than the Intel ones. But the main reason why I returned it was because I wasn't using it. But also next year, we're going to be getting these next M1 MacBooks. And that's going to be a super crazy year for sure. So that's really pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button. That means so much. But definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.
Thank you.